Okay then my friends, so now we can register and we can log out. The next step is to allow unauthenticated users to log back into their account. Now we already have the login page and the form created which sends a post request to the login route when it's submitted. And again, we already created that route and the controller action for that route a couple of lessons back. You can see that it's hooked up to the login action right here. All right, so now we just need to flesh that login action out to log users into the application. So before we do anything inside this login function, we're gonna accept the request argument, which is of type request, because we're gonna need that in just a moment. Now inside this function, we need to do a few things. First, we need to validate the user input using the validate method on the request object, just like we did before. Second, we need to try and log the user in using their credentials, and we'll do that with the help of the auth facade again. And third, we need to redirect the user to the index page if the login is successful. If the login isn't successful, then we'll send an error back to the login page, which we can then show to the user. So let's start by validating the user input, which in this case is just the email and the password. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this thing right up here from the register action, and I'm gonna paste it down here because it's quite similar, but there are some changes. So first of all, we don't need the name field anymore. That's not on the login screen, so let's get rid of that. Inside the email, we don't want it to be unique anymore, otherwise we'll never be able to log in. And then down here, we don't need the confirmation, and we don't need min characters A either, because we're gonna do the check for the actual password down below. All right, cool. Okay, so now we have the validated user credentials stored inside this validated variable. We can now use them to try and log the user in. Now to do that, we can say auth, and then we're gonna use the method this time called attempt, which attempts to log in a user based on some credentials, an email and a password. Notice before we just used the login method, and that's because we didn't need to verify that their credentials were correct. They just registered with their credentials. So we could just use that login method. This time we're attempting to log in with the email and password they provided. All right, so we have those stored in the validated variable up here, and we can just pass those validated credentials in as an argument. Now, this method, if successful, associates the newly logged in user with the session and now considers that user to be authenticated. The method also returns a Boolean, true or false, depending on whether the login attempt was successful or not. If the credentials are correct and it was successful, it returns true. If the credentials are not correct and it wasn't successful, then it returns false. And that's really important because we need to handle both of these scenarios separately. So what we could do then is wrap this authentication attempt inside an if statement, all right? So inside this if statement, if this is successful, then we could conditionally run some code within the code block, all right? So the first thing we'll do inside here is say dollar sign $request, then use the session method, and then we're gonna use a method on that called regenerate. And it's generally advised to do this when we have a newly authenticated user to prevent something known as fixation attacks, where an attacker might use a known session to gain access to a user account. So this line of code just regenerates the session ID for a newly authenticated user, but it keeps all the session data intact and it just provides a more secure environment for the user, all right? So we're logged in. We've associated the authenticated user with the session and we've regenerated the session ID. Next up, we need to redirect the user back to the index page. So let's do that by saying return and then we're gonna use the redirect function. And then on that, we can use the route method to specify we wanna redirect to the ninjas.index routes. All right, so now from a user's perspective, when they submit the login form, if their credentials are correct, then they just get redirected to the index page again. If the credentials were incorrect though, then this attempt method returns false and we don't run this code block. And down here, we need to handle what happens when that is the case. So then remember how when we use this validate method up here, if there's any validation errors, Laravel returns us back to the form page and passes those errors into it, right? And then inside that page view, we can output those errors. Now under the hood, the way this occurs is that the validate method throws what's known as a validation exception. And Laravel automatically handles that for us in the way I just described by re-rendering the same page and passing the errors into the view so we can use them. Now, 
We can also manually throw a validation exception outside of this validate method, which does the same thing for us. And that's what we want to do, right? We want to keep the user on the same login page, but we want to re-render it with those errors which get passed to the view so we can show them. So to do this, we can say throw, then we're going to use a validation exception. And you want to click on this one right here with the illuminate in the namespace to use that namespace. Then we can use a method on that called with messages to pass any error messages that we want into the view when it gets re-rendered. Now, as an argument to this, we're just going to pass an array of key value pairs where the key is the error name or the identifier and the value is the message for the error. So we could add any key name in here. I'm going to call mine credentials. And then as a value for this, we'll write a message like, sorry, incorrect credentials. All right. So that's what we want a user to see. All right. So now if the login attempt wasn't a success, we'll skip this code block and instead we'll throw this validation exception. In turn, Laravel handles that by directing us back to the same login page and it passes this error message into the view so we can show it to the user. So let's do that now. Let's go back to the login view and output the error, which remember could be thrown by the validate method if the input values fail that validation or by us manually down here if the credentials are incorrect. All right, so what I'm actually going to do is go to the register view and I'm just going to copy this stuff right here where we output the errors because it's exactly the same logic that we need inside this login view. So I'm just going to paste them down here. And now if we have any errors either from this validate function right here or from here, then they're going to get output right at the bottom of this template. So let's give this a whirl. All right, so I'm going to try logging in as Yoshi at NetNinja dev which is the account I signed up for before password I'm gonna deliberately do this wrong so we see that error message and yep we can see sorry incorrect credentials awesome so that works now I use the actual password pw123456 login and we get redirected to the home page awesome so that all works